Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to continue our discussion on academic self-efficacy, particularly in the context of exam taking. And really why I'm doing this video is because it was the conceit of the standardized exam and of the regular exam videos that came before this that we were talking about paper tests or we were talking about those exams that you can take that you can see all of the questions of. So that might differ for online exams. So let's talk about online exams. The biggest difference in online exams is that you may have an exam that feeds you one question at a time and then you, based on how you answer that question, it may decide to ask you another question that is either greater in difficulty or easier if you got it wrong. If you got it wrong, you get easier. If you got it right, you get greater. That is how many exams are given today. Okay, so in terms of this, we have to make sure that we're getting a sense of what's going on. These are exams where you cannot look at all the questions at once. Some online exams, in fact, many online exams, are such that you can see all of the questions at once. And if they are like that, then you approach them the exact same way as the last two videos talked about. Okay, so you're going to deal with them in terms of trying to do all of the ones you can get easily, so on and so forth. If it's an online exam where it is this specific type of where you are given a question, you have to answer that question, and based on for your answer, it changes the nature of the question, then the way you go about this is differently. Okay, basically, the biggest thing you have to worry about then is time. You're going to look at a couple of things before you take this online exam. If it is the kind where you're given one question and then you have to answer it and then you're given another question. The two things you're going to look at is you're going to look at how much time is allotted for the entire test. How many questions are on are on the exam? And are points deduct are extra points deducted? For guessing. Now, it is a cruel and unusual conceit when a standardized exam or an online exam, which is usually the standardized ones, take off extra points for guessing because they're forcing you to guess. Usually you cannot leave an exam, uh, exam question blank, although they usually do have a skip button somewhere in the corner. And so that's why we need to look at this and decide whether it's worth it to actually answer that question or not. Okay, if you know how much time is allotted for the entire exam and you know how many questions are on the exam, then you're gonna take the entire time and you're gonna divide it by the number of questions and that's gonna give you your amount per question, right? So this will give you the amount of time per question, which means that you need some kind of clock or some kind of something that helps you keep track of time as you're going through this. Usually there's a timer in the midst of the exam, like on the same screen there's a timer. Do not hide that timer. You need that timer. So you're looking at the amount of time per question and you're saying, okay, I have, for instance, if it's a 60 minute test and there are 120 questions, then you have about half a minute each, right? That's actually need a uh, decimal. All right, so a half a minute each means that you got 30 seconds for each question. So within that 30 seconds, you must decide, 
can I answer this easily? And if it, you can't answer it easily, you know the correct answer, you can do it quickly, then you answer it and you save time for questions that you don't know as well. So you do it, you do it quickly, that's the best of all worlds, right? You know the answer, it's gonna be the correct answer, and you can do it quickly. You answer it, great. You get to questions where you know you can answer it, but it's gonna take a little bit more time, still try to answer it. I mean, be cognizant of the time, don't take too much over the allotted time per question, but take some time, you can do it. There are, will hopefully be other questions that you can answer quickly and easily in the future. If you have a 50-50 chance of narrowing it down, so in other words, there are two answers, you know something about the question, but you don't know the correct answer, you can narrow it down to a 50-50 chance. That may or may not be worth it. It usually is worth it. Usually you can narrow it down to a 50-50 chance within half a minute, and then you can guess. All of those things that I just talked about, the quick and uh, correct answers, the answers that you can get over, that are correct over time, and the 50-50 chance are all things that you should mandatorily do when you're approached with a question in this kind of exam. Okay, recognizing that you're trying to hold to a time frame. The only thing that you should maybe think about not doing is this last part. And that is, if you don't have a sense about that question at all, you don't know what it's asking, you don't have any idea what the answer is, or you've run out of time. You really, you have 20 more questions or 10 more questions and you just, you're like three minutes from the end. Then the way you do this is different depending on whether those extra points are deducted for guessing. If you have extra points deducted for guessing, then you need to skip all of those. You need to basically leave them blank. That's what skip does, okay? And it'll say at the end of the exam, are you sure you want to leave these blank? And you will say yes if extra points are deducted for guessing. And the reason why is the amount of points that you would be deducted for guessing those questions, for getting them wrong, is going to be much larger than the amount of points you would have gotten from guessing them correctly. That's the point. Having said that, if this is not true, if there are no extra points deducted for guessing, then you should, like you did in the standardized exam, pick an answer, pick whatever letter you're going to pick, whether that's A, B, C, D, E, whatever, and you're going to answer that exact letter, maybe it's D, so you would answer D for every question that remains. Okay? If there's no extra points deducted for guessing, then suddenly the, level, the playing field is a little more level, and you can say, hey, guessing, I, could, I will definitely get it wrong if I leave it blank, but I might get it right if I guess. And I'm not deducted extra points for guessing, so I might as well go for it. Okay? Recognize that big piece about online exams is by far the time. You have to know how much time you have for each question, and you have to know exactly how much effort it's going to take, how much time, effort, and how much um, accrued time you're going to have for each question. The reason why is because if you spend 20 minutes on one question, you've just thrown away a lot of questions. You cannot do that in an exam like this. And so you have to be very aware of how much time there is, and you have to make your decisions well and quickly. All right. It's a good time, those online exams. I'll we'll talk more, and until I see you next time.